Hi, my name's John Dupre. And I'm Jacob Dupre. You guys just heard the Beatles tune, Penny Lane. That was the piccolo trumpet solo. We're going to break it down and show you how to play it. We're not gonna talk about literally note for note, fingering for fingering, but I'm really gonna focus on what kind of skills, what kind of tools you need to be able to play the solo to the best that you can and how to practice it. Okay, so when we were getting ready for this video, we were talking a lot about how the piccolo is not like a B-flat trumpet. They're obviously similar embouchure kind of fingering things, but it's just different, so tell us why. Basically, that ending thing, especially what you just said, Jacob, which is about fingerings, combinations, and specifically how it sounds. So for example, a normal C, which is played just open, not pressing any valves down, it's gonna be a B-flat concert. Can you play the B-flat concert that'll be? Now the piccolo trumpet, first of all, always sounds up an octave. That means you end up repeating to the same pitch. So if you have like a B-flat, then it'll actually sound like a B-flat an octave above that. Now the way that the piccolo trumpet works is you have these pipes right here. They end up coming out, they go in. Depending on what kind of pipe you play, changes the key. So that means it changes exactly how every single note on that instrument sounds. Right now, I'm playing on the A pipe. So that means whenever I now play a C, that would have been that normal B-flat concert, it actually sounds up an octave, but it's an A concert because it's the A pipe. So the other big thing, because you're playing these certain fingerings and they sound different, you have to have really good ears. So you have to be able to listen. You have to be able to, you should be able to sing. Listen to music, always feel it, always be able to know exactly what you're trying to sound like before you end up playing. So for Penny Lane specifically, talk about the fingering combination, if I remember right, is like a D scale, like a D major scale on a B flat trumpet, but it's actually sounding in B concert. That is correct. So yeah. that means that if you were to take the scale that you use in this key, which is in concert B major, that's what Beatles Penny Lane uh, is basically in, mm -hmm. you end up playing one and three D, which would be normally on a B flat trumpet at the bottom of the staff, but instead it's gonna come out as up an octave and it's gonna be a B concert. So that's that note, but I was playing one and three. Because it's so much higher, you have to use a lot faster airstream, lots of faster airstream. It's also a smaller instrument. The trumpet's a bigger instrument, so you really have to fill up the trumpet. This is more about thinking about short but fast bursts of air that are completely correct for those pitches, making sure you can play those. The solo also includes a lot of, some not a lot, but some double tonguing, and includes having to go up in that higher register. So a lot of those things that end up helping you with that include lip slurs, flutter tonguing, using method books such as the Arvin, Clark, Gecker, also the James Thompson book is also a really good book, which is mainly based a lot on buzzing. Buzzing is a very, uh, Another important tool as well. Do a little bit of buzzing. When you say buzzing, what do you mean? So just like that, where you take off, take out the mouthpiece, and you have to just be able to buzz and blow that air to be able to match those pitches. There's no valves whenever you're just using the mouthpiece. If you can do it on the mouthpiece, you'll be able to do it on that instrument. And then you mentioned double tonguing. So what's like the quick 101 quick study on double tonguing. Yeah, so basically, um, normally a lot of the time you use what's called single tonguing for slower passages or lines, and you end up saying ta, sometimes people say tu, kind of depends on the piece of music, what you end up playing. There's also different schools of thought as well. It might Something might work better for other people, but for double tonguing, you end up using a K with your tongue so that instead of ta, 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 you go ta, ka, ta, ka, which is especially what you need at the very beginning of that iconic solo. It's really beautiful. It actually stems from a lot of what you would call a classical old repertoire of piccolo trumpet music. Like, like the Brandenburg. Like Bach, yeah. Bach, Henry Purcell has a sonata in D. That's another uh, piccolo trumpet piece. Um, but another, so again, with the double tonguing, you especially want to be able to keep the air moving. That's, that applies to everything. Is air, 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 air. You have to be able to figure out how to change your airspeed and you have to stay relaxed. Try to feel and stay as comfortable as you can while you're playing those notes, um, especially whenever you're going up into the higher register. So one of the first things you have to be able to do at the beginning of the solo is be able to double tongue. As I was saying, you have to be able to go ta-ka-ta, ta-ta-ta, ta-ka-ta. Make sure that your air continues to go. So the most important thing to be able to do that is slurring. What that means is you're not using your tongue but you just keep the air going and still move the fingers. So the original line was like this, right? So then you wanna end up slurring. So you do the same thing with your fingers in the air. Uh, you just don't use your tongue. So instead, 
And if you end up doing that, whenever you add in that tongue, it's really gonna help fluidity and make it really clean. So what about the big leaps at the end where you play that <laughs> like really wide range? It's like, I think it's a major triad that's just jumping up, right? It's these big skips and then you end up on that high note at the end. It seems like, like what I always hear you preaching to me that a lot of your teachers have told you is it's air, it's air, right? That you don't play higher by tensing up your face, it's faster air, right? So I'm assuming that has to be a big part of how you can get up there for that yes. last phrase. Absolutely, same thing that we were saying earlier, you have to have good ears, so you wanna be able to hear. If you can sing those notes, that's gonna be a really big first step. One really important thing that's gonna help is lip slurs. So you do not start your sound with just the tongue. You can, you know, whenever you just say ta or tu, you can already feel that air just naturally come out. You have to be able to fill it up though. You have to be able to keep using your own air. You can end up just starting your sound with just air. For example, when I play this, I was using my tongue there, but really it's that air that's starting that sound. It's getting that sound go. The, the tongue is really just starting it into that articulation. But I can think this way instead. Just using air, I'm using just bursts of air, starting my sound. It's all about air, it's all about that air. So then if you end up slurring, that's gonna force you to have to get up there, use those higher, that get into the higher register through air mainly. What's something you would practice that you feel like would specifically prep you for playing Penny Lane? You could literally just take that last line, which if you think about it, you're gonna be playing again, and that starting on that lower register of the D one and three, but you're using a G arpeggio. So that's D, G, D, B, G, then D and then G up there. So what you can do is you can use one and three for a lot of those. So but you, you have partials, right? That means that on the trumpet, on brass instruments, often like there can be five, six, seven, even more notes depending on your range to all be one fingering or one slide position if it's like trombone or something like that. Mm -hmm. So if you use that, you know, I can normally play the line like this, but I can use all one and three like this instead. Okay, so for that high note at the very end, obviously the tendency for a lot of players is gonna be to like, go like that, like when it's coming. How do you actually practice to not do that, to not make that a habit? Fighting that like feeling of wanting to use pressure or tension to get something high, to be able to play high. You already hit one of the biggest points, which is you definitely just don't want to end up pinching. You want to try to stay relaxed. You have to be focused and aware of that. Uh, another big thing is think about how you practice when you end up playing high. Your chops, your lips can get really tired real fast, especially on brass instruments. The lip slur, which we were just working on and talking about, you know, that's one of the most important things because you end up starting in that lower register, so you're going to feel more comfortable. If you were to take one of those higher lines, but you played it down an octave, you want that upper octave to sound more and more like your lower octave. Your lower octave is gonna sound more comfortable. It's gonna sound beautiful, sound resonating. You always wanna think about that, almost as if you're singing, right? Uh, another big thing is listen, 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 listen. Like I was saying earlier, just play the piccolo trumpet, you know, you have to be able to hear, to hear things, but how are you gonna be able to know what you're supposed to sound like if you've never listened to that type of music and that kind of sound? piccolo trumpet doesn't have that much repertoire really out there. It's a very specialized kind of instrument. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you listen to some of those recordings that it was written for to get an idea of the sound. But I think you've already explained to the how to get that sound, the classical sound, right? Yes. Which, how would you describe it in a nutshell? Biggest thing is just thinking of a beautiful resonating sound, you know, thinking about articulating, especially with that hard T, T, you know, that's a big thing about it. If you were to take, you know, Miles Davis, Louis Armstrong, somebody like that, and, and take their articulation, a lot of things are going to be kind of different. They are partly connected depending on how hard you articulate or what you want, the length of the note, you know? The biggest thing is just how it sounds and how you stay things connected and things are so resonating. It's a, it's a certain sound, you know, again, same thing. The more you listen to it, the more you get a recognition for it. Hope you guys liked this video. Again, my name is John Dupre. If you have any questions about the piccolo trumpet or what we talked about today, please refer to your Sweetwater sales engineer. And yes, we, we are, are brothers. brothers. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, 
click here for more videos like this one, and go to Sweetwater.com for all of your music instrument and pro audio needs.